We're talking now to Eric Schultz, who is the Chief Commercial Officer at Airbus. Thank you very much for speaking with me. Two very quick questions. First one, how big is the middle of the market? Everybody seems, keeps talking about this. So I think we have to distinguish what we would call the mid-range with the middle of the market. Because I think the middle of the market is already the name that Boeing has given to a product. So let's put that aside for a moment. The mid-range market, which is the market between the single L and the long and the wide bodies, uh, <clears throat> basically for us it's a market of about 5,000 aircraft within the next 20 years. Now, the, where we get where we get to a difference of opinion between Boeing and Airbus is the way we serve that market. The way we believe we serve that market is by offering flexibility, high level of flexibility to the airlines from both the single air and the wide body side. Um, and, and Boeing believes that they can pinch point an aircraft right in the middle of the page and be successful with it. I don't, and I will explain why. First of all, the market is driven today, the growth in the market is driven today by clearly the, the, the low cost. Um, the traditional carrier are doing 2, 2.5% growth year over year, but the big boom is coming from Asia, it's coming from the low cost everywhere around the globe, South America, Africa, Middle East, Asia, Europe, and, and, and the US. When you look at what a specific product would mean for them, that would mean that if today they are operating purely single air, that means a second product, which has very, very limited complementarity with what they have. That would mean they would need specific pilot, they would need specific training, they would need specific maintenance, they would have a different product, they would have all kinds of different stuff, which means for an airline complexity. Mm -hmm. Every time I meet with the airline, and even more with the low cost, their simple world is simplicity. They want simplicity and they want also options, optionality. They want flexibility around the scope. What we offer is today, we are pushing our A321 to the right to get to longer and longer haul. Uh, <clears throat> and when you deal with the low cost airline, and if you were a, a, a CEO of any low cost around the world, and if you were already successful in your, I would say, home market of something like short haul market, and you're successful with your single L airplane, now comes the day when you want to expand to a little bit longer haul. The best, most simple, cheapest, and safest solution, same, safest in terms of risk, yeah. business risk, no risk, is that you expand the actual fleet you have to get to that market. And that's what we are, we are offering with the A321LR. Because what this means is, that the, first of all, you don't add any cost because you already have all of the pilots trained. You don't add any maintenance because you already have the contracts in place. And at the end, what you do is, you are able to test that market on longer haul with no risk, because if it doesn't work, if your route doesn't work, you can just get back to your normal business. So the level of risk you have taken is zero. Now if I say to you, oh, no, no, but I know, I have a product I can pinch pop right here, but that product has no way to go down or up because it's blocked down because it's not efficient, it's blocked up because it's not as efficient. The problem you have is that if it doesn't work, you're stuck with the product right in the middle you don't need anymore. And that's the value proposal we have. And once the airline gets to that bite of long haul business, if when once they mature their business, once they are established, then they can go for white body because the white body will always be the one that has that is the most efficient because of the size. And and so we believe that by offering that two solution. In fact, we simplify because at the end of the day, if you were one of these airlines trying to crunch at this, if you take a specific NMA product right in the middle, at the end you end up with three products as compared to two. So then my follow-up question would be then, why are the Boeing, for example, but also the engine makers struggling so much to figure out what this is? You've come up with a very crystal view, mm -hmm. 5,000, yep. and this is how you're tackling it. Yep. Why, why is everybody else struggling? Well, because I believe that it, 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 it is a nice market when you look at this in, 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 and, and you agglomerate numbers that are not related. The problem is that when you start to get one level down and you ask about what are the product attributes, well, the product attributes are different for a lot of people. Yes, that market is big between 200 and 250 to 275 seats, even 300 seats. But the problem is that, well, some people need cargo operation, some people don't. So you, you look at the North Atlantic and you, you look at the, uh, the US, they don't need cargo because the cargo is available with other 
uh, ways, including road, by the way, in the US. The Asian absolutely need cargo. Yeah. Um, you take the, uh, <clears throat> in, terms of, in terms of engine technology, I mean, even Dennis Muhlenberg said um, he would want to take something which has, uh, which has a, a, a proven technology. But proven technology means he takes a product which is existing today. Um, because, because, so uh, even Boeing yesterday said they would, they, would consider, they would consider to do aluminum fuselage. Well, if they do an aluminum fuselage with existing technology, that airplane exists already, and it, it has a name, it's a 321LR. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what you get to, is that there is nothing in the pipe of technology today. And the engine companies, I was in an engine company six months ago, so I think I can talk uh, quite <coughs> uh, about the subject. There is nothing in the technology today that would drive an aircraft to be 5, 6 or 10 percent more efficient in 10 years' time. There is nothing there. Especially if, like, like, like the CEO of Boeing said, they want to take existing technology. So the reality is that I think the reason for Boeing to delay and delay all of that is because we all know the business case is very, very difficult. Thank you so much.